Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad, and I'm about to be on television. I'm interviewing with Evansville, Indiana's TV stations because we are doing the new Harmony Appraisal Fair in Indiana this weekend. It's a great appraisal and antique show. We had a lot of fun last year, saw some really great things. And then once we get done here, we are going to change into our grubbies because we are going to go hunting at a vendor's mall in Henderson, Kentucky, and it is under new management. I understand that it's really improved a lot and I'm looking forward to seeing what bargains we can find to flip for a profit. We're going to a new thing, or actually a reopened thing. It's a vendor mall slash flea market that was open and then shut and then reopened. And we hear that some of the dealers have moved back in and some new dealers that have vintage and there's supposed to be some fresh stock there. So looking forward to that. Oh, you drive motorbikes. Oh, you drive motorbikes and jump over cars. Wow, that's strange and interesting. All right, we are at Henderson's other flea market. This is All Peddlers Flea Market. This was a flea market that closed and has reopened, and you see they show on their sign antiques, collectibles, and misc. It's called the Audubon Complex because right across in all those trees is the Audubon State Park. This is the town that John James Audubon spent a good deal of his time chronicling birds as they flew up the Mississippi Flyway and into the Ohio River Valley. And this place is really a flea market. There is going to be new stuff. There's going to be booths full of things that they ordered or got as overruns or from salvage outfits. And then there's going to be old stuff as well. This room is merging into the Kentucky room. This used to be full of a lot of old stuff, so I'm curious to see what old stuff they might have left. And I see these four Sooner glass pieces. These were made in Oklahoma. This shows you some of the color variation. The cobalt tend to be the most popular, along with some of the pinks and then the greens. The ambers and oranges are more common. They have them all priced the same at $50 each. One of these little Magnus organs for $40. This place is pretty extensive. It's also pretty dark. We're going to hope that maybe some of this glass that we see down here on this low shelf has been forgotten or wasn't considered important by the owner but first i want to look at this tiki mug and see if it's old it's orchids of hawaii from japan ten dollars not a terrible price because it's got the green rhinestone eyes there's a lot of the orchids of japan ones that don't have any decoration like that this one down here is the one that intrigues me because of the double layering and this one is 1899 and I think I'm going to get that one because it's on the lines of swung vases. The double layer is interesting. It's an American piece from the Ohio Valley. And we're just not seeing a lot of this anymore. The green one in here is Empoli and they've got it priced at $25. they have got these cute little daffodil screen print glasses, but they want $30 for the set. And this is English, but it's called Moari because of the patterning. These are 1970s. This is from Meekin, and it's part of their JG Studio line. DeMarche Forge Aluminum did these owls, 1970s era, out of D-Land, Florida. And this is not a company I see often, and it's owls, and it's Floridian, and it's eight bucks, and it's mine. This tray down here is a familiar piece to me with the maroon lining. Nice little pedestal dish. It's even got its label on it, so that makes it really easy to tell that it is Rose Lane of California. We mainly think of them for their sparkle-eyed animals, but there is the Rose Lane California sticker on it. They made some really nice stuff. This one also has the Rose Lane Pasadena California impressed mark. And this one is priced 
for $22.99 because this dealer does like their modernism. These old rocking salt and pepper shakers are hard to find because a lot of times they rocked right off and fell on the floor and broke. So this one's $15.99, 1930s vintage. And there are the tiny bluebirds, $32.99 for the set of floor. Now this is different because it's marked Jaru, like Jaru Pottery out of California, but it's hand painted on tile. And I don't know that Jaru actually did that sort of work. I'm wondering if this might be a coincidence, but yet you turn it over and no, a California decorative original by Jaru. So here's something I never knew they made before. It's priced at $30. I don't know whether there's room in that or not. I'm almost tempted to take a chance just because it's something different by them and I am seeing their prices rising. Well, here's some old appliances. The old Maytag washer with the ringer. This is an electric washer and then you run your clothes and this one, I can't quite tell what the price is. I don't think it's $7.27, but it is a neat thing. My neighbor down the street in the 1970s, his mother insisted on using these old Maytag washers because she thought that wringing the clothes was better for them than putting them through the dryer. And then this is an old metal ice box. And I call it an ice box. It's a Tennessee Valley icer. Someone's done a little painting on it. But your ice went up above and then the stuff stayed cold down below. The Tennessee Valley icer because this is a part of the country that didn't really get electrification until as late as the late 30s and early 40s. But this is the spot that has the antiques in the vintage. This is called the Kentucky Room and the Tennessee Room. And you notice that they have a lot of Pyrex right off the bat and the Hazel Atlas punch bowl with the polka dots, which I've always liked, and the Fire King with the polka dots, which I've always liked. I think this is going to be that same dealer we saw in that other vendor mall because they know their stuff, they have it priced right. The Chinese red teapot is $35 and the cookie jar is $65, but they do have a lot of really neat pieces. So for a collector, this is a find. For a dealer, it's a nice place to look at prices and then try to find things that you can price the same. However, I do think the Louisiana crawfish in the Prairie Green is not a bad price for $4.99. This little piece here is an early Francoma piece for $20, so they knew how to price that. The flame orange candlesticks from the 70s are $14.99, and those are almost tempting at that price. There might be room in that. But the thing I really like, and I'm not expecting to be able to buy, but I'm going to take a look, is the orange Italian vase with the twist on the back wall here. Right there. That is actually an old piece. Older, 1970s, and it's $24.99. Hmm. You know, at that price, I think I'm going to get that piece. It's just getting hard enough to find this sort of glass, and it's so hot right now. Here's another one. This one is an old wooden ice chest. This one is priced at $500. Then across from it, and it's not for sale, it's just a display in this really cool record store. This is Space Monkey again. They're in Evansville, and they're in the other vendor mall here in Henderson, and this one. And as a prop, they are tempting us with this really cool Evans Constellation. It's just such a great design. It's got a little damage that you see, but it is wood. It's got this great pink, hot, hot, hot pink, glowing pink Lucite insert for the name. That's just really a neat piece. Evans Music, Chicago, Illinois. And you can tell by the songs on here, Patti Page, Earl Bostick, highlights from the Glenn Miller story with the modern airs that we're looking at something from about 1950. A couple of different generations of AMF Roadmaster bikes there. And then this one is for sale. It is a project. It's a Wurlitzer Statesman. It says it has no back panel and needs servicing, but it's only $200. And it does have a really cool picture of a mountain scene. Cute old sleigh bed. This is an actual old one. We see a lot of newer sleigh beds. This one is priced at $200. I do see a vase that I like. I am very excited about this blue dots pattern. I have the drinkware. You used to see this a lot. I haven't seen this in a long time. It's Capri Blue by Hazel Atlas from the early 60s. It's $19 and it says 
everything with this tag number 1116 is half off. Well, this doesn't say 1116. So I'm a little confused. I'm going to have to ask about that. A set of bone dishes. This is what would sit beside your plate so that you could put your bones in it. These are cute. Made in Germany about 1920. And this is an old Victorian piece of china for only $14.99. Probably English doesn't give us any actual clues as to its origin because it's old enough that it didn't have to. It wasn't required back then. 1960s grape chip and dip is $24. couple of the little Royal Dalton figures. I'm just curious to see what people in flea markets think these are worth now. This one says it's as is and it's five dollars which certainly for as is is the right price and then this guy is Sam Weller at eighteen dollars which again is probably about the right price nowadays. Cadillac motor car division these are late 1950s twenty five dollars each or seventy five for all four. Nice floor model Brunswick record player from the 1920s, priced at $200, and it says yes, it works. Well, this guy has some older toys and games, and he's half off, so let's see if we see anything. Mouse trap, but the box is not great. Nitwit and Loom, this might be how some of our sewers and crafters who watch us now got started. Now this is older Cabbage Patch Kids because it's still referring to the Appalachian artworks before Coleco took over. Let's see what kind of shape this is in. And it is half off of what price? 25, so it would be 1250. Strawberry shortcake has an oven and there it is. These old walking Donald Duck toys. Bart Simpson's been out 30 years, but because he's still a current character, a lot of people aren't collecting it. But there are some older pieces that are vintage now. And we've got a Huckleberry Hound. He is an old bubble bath bottle. But I have to say, most of this doesn't look like anything that's going to do much for me. So this is a crown pump organ. Someone has attached a newer mirror to the top for some reason. It is priced at $2.50. They are not the easiest sells, but they're pretty. I need to show this because they're golden replicas of United States stamps. So what they are are first day covers issued by the post office when a new stamp comes out. And then they would have a 22 karat gold foil stamp put next to it. These are worth about a dollar a piece. Don't get excited about these. They're perfectly fine if you like to collect them they're not really very valuable at all because they make millions of them. The gold is a plating. It's not something that you're going to be able to sell for scrap metal. Jeff Shepard, MVP of the Kentucky Wildcats, that's a big deal around here, and he signed it right on his shorts. $25. Well, crates and tins of all sorts here. Now, the problem with these isn't that some of them aren't fun, and people certainly collect some of this, but condition is really important on these, and most of these are pretty scratched. A little bit of rust. They're just not high quality, so they're not going to be of high value. Let's take a look at this magic defroster. Oh, it's just the box, though. This would have been something where you set a timer and it would defrost your refrigerator for you, which was a hassle in the old days. You used to, used to have to chip all of that ice away as it built up on the freezer part. Some neat old wood boxes as well. None of them cheap, however. I like this one with the advanced die set from Chicago. And this one had a Remington noiseless typewriter. The neat thing about old crates is that lots of stuff was contained in crates that we don't think of now. This one down here is Wabash River Ordnance Works. Government property inside. This is $75. It's actually not a bad piece, considering it's got an interesting top. This is probably from the Second World War. I imagine Wabash River Ordnance was where they kept ammunition at that time, up in Indiana. Kavanaugh Distributing Company. A couple of old Army first aid boxes. This one's $45. And then this one is Mine Safety MSA. And this one is priced at $15. Now that might be of interest, depending on what the contents look like inside, how old they are, how complete it is. So let's take a look. 
ah, and here it is. It's got all the stuff. And this is mainly bandages and stuff for burns and swabs. This would probably be something that would be viable. Mine Safety Appliances Company, Pittsburgh 8, Pennsylvania. So that's before zip codes were used and that didn't happen until the end of 1963. So we know this is at least older than that. Seabright's Rose Combs, Duckles, Wyandotte, and Danvers, a chicken crate. And they would jump out of there when you brought them home. This is a fun red wing pattern and look at these great shapes from the 50s. Just so wild and atomic era. $29.95. It's not one of their more known patterns or I'd be tempted to get it for that price because it really is such a great shape. And then if you like rusted farm junk for decorating, you are in the right place. Look at all these old hand plows. The one in the middle there had a little place to put something to actually power it. It has a great wheel. This one here had a little place to put the seeds that was covered and they would drop out so you could do your seed rows. It has a neat wheel on it. I'll come to the side so you can see. A lot of these are priced in the 100 to 200 range because they are being used as decoration by people now. Almost every vendor mall in this part of the country anyway has somebody who buys food that is salvage or overstock or stores that close. So they sell it really cheaply. It's not really past its expiration date or anything and it's just sort of whatever you get is what you get but for someone on a budget there's some deals in here i'm a little picky about what i eat but you know these were can of crackers for 50 cents Zeno found lentils and wild rice oh yeah and they're yellow lentil i do have some uh, pasta sauce i need to use various amber the fostoria coin in the back is probably the best deal at 15 dollars my mom was a big fan of Gladys Knight and the Pips. They had a TV show briefly in the 70s, I remember us watching. They even have a snack bar in here. I am, yeah. I like to show people where I go to find old stuff and I like the fact that you guys have a snack bar, so I thought I'd tell everybody you've got one because it looks like all these pies might be handmade. Those are homemade uh, chest and pecan pies. Mm, love a good chest pie. Let's see if this is real. Do not feed bears. Always a good idea, but that is a reproduction. You can tell by the fuzziness in the logo. Plus it's this really thin metal. So yeah, not right. And stars and bars, amber fairy lamps, 20 bucks each. It's become such a popular thing. The fairy lamp craze is on and it has a lot to do with YouTube, but it's not exclusive to that anymore because everyone else is caught on because of YouTube. So it's interesting to see YouTube starting to lead the market with certain types of merchandise. This piece is not old. Look at the way it's finished on the bottom. And it's got a big bubble in the bottom as well. This cookie jar is $50 and it's fairly flimsy. I'm sure it's probably Japanese, but I'll bet it's 1980s. It is Sigma, the taste setter, Planetary Pals. This is another 90s vintage cookie jar that's supposed to look like the Chrysler building for $39.95. And this one is Treasure Craft, but this is made in China. This is the very last of the Treasure Craft lines after it was no longer owned by False Graph. They tried moving it to China after moving it to Mexico, trying to save money. It stopped making money as soon as they moved out of California. And by about 2002, it was a memory and the name was sold off and I believe now that it is applied to a bunch of children's school supplies that are called treasure craft. You see the Dalmatians more because there's reproductions of these. Let's see if we can tell if this one's real or a repro. Well first of all it's very heavy, secondly it's got the crackling, thirdly it has wear and the logo seems right so I think this one is legit. Oh, yeah, but I'm afraid oh that, that could like, be very good. That could be one of those interesting Italian it's plastics. Master by Colony uh -huh. Nicholas Angelakos design. Oh yeah, we're going to take that. I think you just found something pretty good. Is it all there and seem intact? It sounds like it has water in it. It was a nice bucket. And this is an Eastlake rocking chair that was reupholstered probably in the 1990s looking at that pattern striped upholstery but it's nice looking and only 90 dollars 
really a good deal, but they sit very low. It's a platform rocker, meaning that the chair itself rocks and the feet stay still. Here's an old switchboard that somebody made. This thing over here is a record that has a timer built into it, so it will turn on and off at various times. That's an interesting old 1940s apparatus. This is an oak handmade body. So this guitar is handmade. Sometimes you'll find good pickups or things from more valuable guitars on handmade guitars. So if you know guitars, they are something to look at, even though the handmade ones are not typically as valuable. Old Kentucky Wildcats trash can. You know, they do have some vintage things. This area used to be run by a fellow who had nothing but antiques and vintage, but he retired uh, back before this place closed, changed hands, and opened again. So to see some antiques coming back in here is great. This is 149. It's not in perfect shape, but this is old paint. Nobody had to fake this stuff. This is what really old paint looks like. It crackled from probably sitting out in a barn or a shed without climate control. It's a very uneven crackling. There's wear in the natural points where there should be wear. So if you're going to repurpose and repaint and try to make something look old, think about stuff like this. There should be more wear on the handle than there should be in the middle of the panel. I see so many repaint jobs and antiquing jobs where they scuff a piece here and a piece there and call it antique, and that's not how it ever would have worn in the first place, and that's why they look so fake. So look for real old painted furniture and you'll get the idea. And there is a pretty groovy sort of relish tray set on a Lazy Susan made in California. Okay, this fellow has some old stuff that's kind of neat. He's restored one of these Oilers. You see one in the unrestored state and you see the one that's restored with the Gulf logo and information on it. The restored one is priced at $5.95. He's got some other large items that are actually pretty collectible. The RC Cola cooler here. We don't see as many RCs as we do of the other brands. And this one is only priced at $80, which makes me wonder if it works. If it works, that is a steal of a deal. Needled cast iron fire hydrant here. And it's got a good logo down on the bottom here too that talks about the foundry. It was painted over and over and over. It is $110. That's actually not a terrible price for an old fire hydrant. They do sell. These engine analyzers are a little harder to sell. The Monroe clock is only $25, and that's actually a pretty good deal because you can put the letters in it and use it for advertising in a space. And then this big Toledo scale is $175. It's been mounted on a steel pole. This thing here is a shingle cutter. It is $48. It's a huge, interesting looking piece of metal. I would think somebody for that price would buy it just to put maybe on top of a high wall in a man cave or a restaurant. And then this would have been an old spark plug tester back in the days when you tested spark plugs this way. Made by Champion, 1950s, it's $58. $30 for the old horse collar, that's pretty good. Double cola sign. American Express signs for $30 each, and an old Sensa Track Big A Auto Parts clock. I mean, these days, you know, we're looking for any signs we can get. So our question on this now is whether a customer would buy this with Dome some master. damage. Yes, it's a Colony Dome Master. It's an Italian designer. 1980s era plastic wear, and some of this Italian plastic from the 70s and 80s goes for big money now. The old pedal car is kind of a junker, but it's cute. Shop manuals for Ford Thunderbirds. This is neat because it looks so old, and it's $95. Not bad for a neon sign, even though this is a newer one. Little Child's version of a Kitchen Queen, $29.99, stamped tin from the 1930s or 40s. And then the old radios here. 45 for the one with FM AM because FM and AM together are more desirable now. Some Soraka wood figurines from the 1930s or 40s, priced at $375 each. This one that's a jazz player, I think, is maybe the most interesting, and I think I might get that one. 
1199 for the holiday or buttons and bows circa 1950 depression glass pitcher. That's a very inexpensive price. Well, I am not trying out for the Shriners Band. I am just here to say thank you so much for watching this video. I had a lot of fun taking you through vendor malls in Henderson, Kentucky. It turned out to be a pretty good shopping day. It reproved what I say over and over, which is thrift stores are great, but you better learn to go through them pretty fast if you're doing antiques and vintage because you're going to find more stuff when you have a collective of dealers that are more focused on antiques and vintage and that's where antique malls and vendor malls come in so goodwill was okay salvation army was okay saint vincent was okay but the vendor malls and the flea markets were much better more stuff for the money thanks for joining me i'm george the antique nomad signing off for now we'll see you again soon from another corner of the antique and vintage world bye for now Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now!